so guys let's start all right so today as this is the first day so there are so many things that we have to discuss so don't worry about the progress of the sessions all right don't worry about it we'll be doing work we'll be completing the syllabus on time right the main thing over here is quality not quantity i hope you all are getting what i'm trying to say i don't want you to overburden also and i also don't want you to just sit away here and just listen that is not the type of trainings i conduct guys i want all of your participation and whatever we are learning i want all of you to just get it in your mind right now talking about day one guys so we'll be discussing about the objective and structure of this course many of the things we have already discussed we'll be discussing about regulatory framework and standards all right we'll be discussing about the certification process that how you are going to certify all right uh, with this certification that is iso 27001 all right and then we'll be discussing fundamental principles of information security and then we'll be discussing information security management system all right so talking about the first thing guys that is this is the approach we'll be having guys all right so your environment is must guys in this course all right that's why in the beginning also i told you that these be interactive throughout the session right so talking about the course other courses that are based on you can say audit best practices is iso all right we have ifac that is international federation of accounts we have icpa that is generally accepted audit standards we have isaka you already aware about it isaka right and we have institute of internal audits these are other courses that are based on auditing uh, you can say certifications all right apart from that guys see this is the competency that uh, the domain competency the document which i have shared with you all all right that pcb document over there it's clearly given the competency and the you can see your knowledge level all right depending upon that particular domain then we have next guys see i told you the certification that you will be receiving guys it will be valid for 3 years all right and the exam will be of 3 hours all right and uh, the maximum percentage to pass this exam is 70% all right now after every year you have to do what you have to fulfill certain pcb code of ethics all right to renew your certification and you have to renew it every year all right then we have next guys that is the prerequisite this is the prerequisite that i already explained you you have to pass the exam you have to adhere to the pcb code of ethics you should be having 5 years of professional experience 2 years of security experience and 300 hours of audit activity all right apart from that you will be giving professional references also all right then we have next guys that is this is how your certification will be looking like all right after you have you can say fulfilled all the prerequisites you have passed the exam you'll be getting a certification like this from pcb all right and as i told you you have to do what every year you have to fulfill the condition to continue the certification then we have what guys what does pcb stands for so pcb stands for professional evaluation and certification board so it is certification body or right that will be that will be providing the certification to the organizations and also providing the certification to the individual so in the last can say before the break i just explain you that thing right that iso 27001 is being uh, you can say awarded to either to the organization or to the individuals right so pcb is one of the body that will be providing you the certification for individual then we have guys what you have to do and why you have to become an auditor certified auditor first is qualifying oneself to conduct audits for a certification body unless or until you are not certified you will not take you cannot take part in audit activities of any organization whether it be internal external or third party second is you have to do what you have to fill certain kind of competencies guys to fulfill those competencies as an auditor you have to do what you have to certify yourself and third is certified professional usually earn salaries higher than those of non certified professional that is again a, a, a valid reason right that is given over here. and that's correct then we have next guys that is the week schedule that we will be following day 1 will be completing introduction to information security and iso 27001 day 2 will be uh, completing audit principle preparation launching of an audit day 3 will be completing on site audit activities day 4 will be closing the audit and day 5 will be giving the final exam it's not mandatory to give the final exam on the last day all right whenever you feel comfortable you can say confident whenever you feel com comfortable just contact your uh, sales person just contact me at that time i will be guiding you to give the exam 
all right then we have guys these are the topics uh, that we already discussed that we are going to cover so talking about the first thing that is what is iso all right what is you can say iso principles management system standards all right what is integrated management system what are iso 27000 family all right what are the advantages of 27001 and what are legal and regulatory conformity so talking about guys we have a term over here that is framework and standards what is the difference between a framework and a standard what do you mean by framework what is a framework and what is standard explain what is the difference between okay. see uh, if i want to explain it to a you can see a new person into the field i'll just explain it with a definition framework defines what to implement and how to implement all right framework is a holistic approach all right it's a holistic approach which will be defining how to implement and what to implement. inside framework you can have various standards it's same like guys see if you want to construct a building all right you can do what a framework will be the outer structure of the building right but where you will be placing the rooms bedrooms you can say your kitchen your you can say living area that will be the standard I hope I'm, 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 I'm clear to everyone the difference guys. I'm not talking technically, but I'm just trying to explain you the difference. So framework is a holistic approach guys inside a framework. You can have various standards. All right. So we are going to discuss about various frameworks and we are going to discuss about standards also. All right. So let's move ahead. Now, what does your ISO stands for? ISO stands for it stands for international standard organization right international standard organization all right it's what guys it's a non-government organization all right that holds a special positions between public and private sectors all right and its members include what its members includes national standards organization who often are part of government structure all right so iso is a network of national standardization body from over 160 countries the final result of iso works are published at international standards and till now guys till 1947 till now over 19000 standards have been published by iso all right so in the beginning guys if i want to, if i will be explaining you the beginning in beginning in 1946 guys 25 country delegates they met in london all right and decided to create new international organization all right that organization uh, later on uh, came into action into operations on 1947 in switzerland and it was named as iso all right now how the iso standards are developed i see as i, uh, I was telling you about in 1947 this one right so how the iso standards are developed guys iso standards are developed guys all right in this we have six step processes first is known as proposal stage all right second is known as preparatory stage all right then we have next that is committee stage fourth is inquiry stage fifth is approval stage and sixth is your obligation stage this is how your iso standards are developed Am I clear to everyone how the standards are developed? I mean by proposal stage, guys. In proposal stage, guys, the development of international standard is to confirm that a particular international standard is needed. First of all, the need will be there, all right. Depending upon that, the nation states, all right, they will be doing what they will be submitting the vote. All right. And then it will be decided that whether the need is actual or not, all right so after that we have preparatory stage all right let me just we have preparatory stage all right so the working group of experts over here at preparatory stage guys which will be doing what they will be uh you can say there will be a chairman all right of which the project leader is set up by tcsc for preparation of working draft all right so what will happen guys at this stage the draft that has been proposed by proposal stage all right it will be forwarded to working groups all right so that the consensus can be built that is preparatory all right then we have third phase guys that is committee stage so what happened at committee stage is guys in committee stage the you can say uh, in committee stage what will happen is over here the draft will be distributed for comments all right and uh, if required voting is also done all right 
then if it is it is in the favor guys so the text is finalized for submission as a draft international standard which is known as dis then we have inquiry stage guys in this the dis is circulated to all the iso members countries all right and over there the voting and comment within a period of five minutes is done all right then the the you can say the document will be submitted as a final draft to uh, you can say fdis that is final draft international standard all right and after that it will be going to the third uh, fifth stage that is approval stage all right now once it is approved it will be going to publication stage where it is published and this is how like your iso 27001 it will be becoming the standard all right depending upon this guys we have basic principles for iso standards we have equal representation voluntary membership business orientations concession approach and intentional cooperation so as i told you guys uh, you can say each uh, you can say countries uh, 160 members will be there so each country there will be one vote per country that is equal representation now we have second that is voluntary membership so it's not like that you will be forced to join ISO committee, right? It's it's completely, uh, you can say, uh, voluntary based. All right. Third is business orientation, guys. So ISO standards will be created on the demand of the market. It's not like that I'm sitting, I'll be setting a proposal and then the member country will be, will be voting and they will be approving. It's not like that, right? Whenever there will be a market demand, then only a new ISO standard will be created. Then we have next that is consensus approach. So in this, you will be doing what? You will be looking for the, you can say the, the mindset, the consensus of different stakeholders. Okay, we have a term over here, guys, that is known as stakeholder. What do you mean by a stakeholder? We have a term that is stakeholders. Any person, who is directly or indirectly get influenced by an organization program that particular entity is called a stakeholder all right it can be your business partner it can be the employees itself let me just explain you guys nowadays because of this covid 19 situation what is happening because of this covid 19 situation many of the organization are not working properly right because of that the salary are not being disposed to the employees so in this case who is who is the stakeholder employees right am i correct or not because they are getting influenced by the you can say the overall working of the organization now. all right then we have yes. next guys that is international corporation so international corporation is also required guys all right to to to, to create iso standards all right so international cooperation between 160 members countries required then we have see we have the definitions all right then we have next that is eight iso management principles so we have eight iso management principles guys that is we have customer focus leadership involvement of people we have process approach we have system approach to management all right we have continual improvement we have factual approach to decision making and we have mutually beneficial supplier relations all right these are what these are the eight iso management principles now talking about them one by one what do you mean by you can say customer focus to meet the s and customer needs because guys in any organization they do what they solely depends on their customer and therefore should understand the current customer needs right and how they are going to striving to exceed customer expectations right then we have next that is leadership see leadership will be including the hard management of the organization and it should be created and maintained in such a way that every person in the organization will be fully involved in achieving the organization objectives am i clear the leadership should be should be maintained and created in such a way inside the organization that every person in the organization will be working in achieving the organization objective all right then we have third guys that is involvement of people see guys every employee in the organization it's an asset for the organization right so people at all the levels all right they should be should be giving their full involvement all right so that the organization can be benefited all right that is involvement of people then we have process approach guys you will be defining the you can say the desired or you can say uh, the activities 
in form of processes all right using which the desired result is achieved efficiently then we have system approach to management what does it mean see in this you'll be doing what in this you'll be identifying you'll be understanding and you'll be managing the processes as a uh, all right the interrelated processes all right you'll be identifying understanding and managing all right because all these things will be contributing to organizational effectiveness and efficiency in achieving its objectives then we have continual improvement guys have you heard about the term that is cmi model yeah and how many levels are there guys in cmi model we have five levels guys and the last level that is level 5 all right in that you will be doing what it is also known as optimizing model all right level so in that you will be doing what you will be focusing you'll be focusing on continuous improvement all right and enhancing existing processes so continuous improvement of the organization is also very very important that is also a permanent objective of the organization all right then we have next guys that is your factual approach to decision making what do you mean by factual approach to decision making guys you will be doing what you will be you will be uh, you will be looking for facts and findings also you will be doing what guys you will be analyzing the data right you will be analyzing the information so your effective decision making will be based on your analysis of data and information okay we have one more term over here guys that is data and information and intelligence what is the difference between these three terms data information all right and what is the difference between these three things guys data is in raw format guys if i'll be writing something like this that is you can say i'll be writing 26th september or i'll be writing 27th september or 28th september all right is it is it making any sense to you guys or if i'll be writing 26 27 28 is it making any sense it is raw form right having no meaning but when i will be processing this data then i'll get a meaning for information so in this i'll 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 be knowing that what i'm talking about so if i'll be writing 26 september 2020 or i'll be writing 27 2020 all right or you can say 28 september 2021 now is it making sense to you guys it's making yeah. sense right now right it's a meaningful information now you can get some meaning from this particular data right that is process data that is information and further if you will be analyzing this information guys you will be creating intelligence all right so this is the difference between data information and intelligence all right then we have next guys that is mutual benefit supplier relationship see it is what guys your organization and your suppliers they are independent bodies right but a mutual relationship will be enhancing the ability of both the parties right you if you are having mutual beneficial relationship with your vendors with your third parties or with your you can say suppliers at that time it will be helping you also to achieve your business objective right so that is your eight iso management principles that we have discussed 